Hey home church, it's uh, good to see you tonight. I'm coming to you from the comfort of my own home, myself and the family. Uh, I've decided we're, we're going to need to self-isolate for 14 days. I've developed a little bit of a cough, but we're hoping uh, that I'm okay. Uh, but we're just deciding to, to keep ourselves safe and, and do what we can do from home for the next 14 days. So to start tonight, we just want to do uh, a little bit of worship with you guys. I spent some time with the, with the kids earlier on. Uh, and we just recorded a couple of songs that we can worship together with. So I just encourage you, wherever you are, not to just listen to this, uh, not to not, not to be uh, watchers, but to be participators. Uh, participate in worship. No one's there. Give your voice to God. Give your all to God. Uh, and let's worship Him together. But first, let's just pray. God, again, I'm so thankful for the opportunity we have to meet together in this way. To meet together online, to to sing praises to you in our own homes, to, to hear about your love, to hear about your goodness, to hear about your instruction. Uh, and God, I just pray that you would uh, be with us tonight. God, that you would bless every person watching this service tonight. God, that you would enrich our lives through, through your word, through your teaching. God, that we would know your presence so closely with us as we worship you together just now. We just give our all to you, Father. We thank you for who you are and for all you've done in our lives. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name your name is alive that the shadows can't deny your name Cannot be overcome. Your name is alive, forever living high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, 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 you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence me, oh Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Just encourage you, wherever you're at, in your own homes, let's just declare the name of Jesus. 
over this situation. Let's lift his name up over this situation. Let's allow his name to silence any fears we've got, any anxieties we've got.
Hey guys, how you doing? It's Des here. I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys online on Alpha on Thursday night at 7.30. It's going to be so exciting seeing that, all that happen. We're going to be using Zoom. So what you need to do is go onto the link that's in Spawned and on the Facebook page. You just click the link and that'll take you directly to a call. On that call, all of us will be there. We'll watch the video together as one shared from one screen. And then what we'll do is we'll split into breakout groups. We've got a few alpha leaders who are going to be on the call and they're going to host these breakout rooms. So it'll just be like doing alpha. The only difference will be it's in the comfort of your own home. And obviously you need to make your own tea and coffee and provide your own biscuits. But apart from that, it'll work just the same way. We aim to be done um, by about 9 p.m. So that's no more than an hour and a half. And we just really, really look forward to seeing you there. Check out the link. Join us. On Thanks, Des, for that. And uh, can I just encourage you all to seriously think about the Alpha course online. We're all in lockdown. We're all at home. There's not a massive amount for us to, to be doing at the moment. So... Doing an alpha course, getting a friend involved, uh, really can make a difference to their lives. There's people all over the place and they're searching for answers just now. There's people uh, all around and, and they just don't know what's hit them. And we have got answers. We've got the only answers. We've got hope for them. So I encourage you, think about what friend you can invite to do online alpha with you this uh, Thursday at half past seven, uh, and let Des know, let us know on the Facebook, uh, sorry, the, the Home Church Scotland page on Facebook, that you're going to be doing that. I'm going to just share a wee Bible passage with us. Uh, I probably won't speak for as long as, as normal with it being a Tuesday night. And actually, I spoke in this on a Sunday morning not too long ago at the at the dedication of young Tristan. Um, I don't know about you guys, I'm finding as this situation unfolds and as this situation unravels, a lot of the words of the Bible are becoming a lot more clearer than they've ever, ever been before. I've said this so many times, the Bible is absolutely relevant to modern day life. It's relevant to everything that's happening today. And actually as people, as I said, are out there struggling for no answers, We've got the answers in this book. What I really believe is that we as a church during this time, our evangelism should be going into overdrive. It shouldn't be a case of, oh, we're in lockdown, we can't do the Great Commission anymore, we can't evangelize anymore, we can't share Jesus anymore. We should be going into overdrive for two reasons. One, people will literally lose their lives to this. If that doesn't give us a sense of urgency to preach the gospel, I don't know what will. Secondly, as, as people are lost, people are struggling, people are actually now, for the first time, beginning to answer questions. They, I've had so 
uh, many messages from people that listen to Sunday's service. And I'm, and I'm totally shocked by some of the people that have been listening to it. They'd never have walked into a church, not in a million years, but they've listened to the service on Sunday. I believe God is on the move. And I believe that we as Christians still have a job to do and go out and do everything we can to reach the lost who are at this point in time searching probably more than ever before. So again, get them hooked up to Alpha, but, on it, but let's take our own responsibility seriously in terms of preaching the gospel. So I did speak in this passage before, but it's just hitting me so relevantly at the moment. We just sung the song, Build My Life. And the, the question really for us is, what have we truly built our lives on? And the encouragement for others who are not yet walking with God is that this is an, a, an absolute 19 karat gold example of where people all over the world, all over this nation, have built their life on the wrong stuff. And right now it's all been eroded. And right now it's all been destroyed. So this this message is really, really relevant. Matthew 6, uh, sorry, Matthew 7, verse 24. Everyone then, he hears these words of mine and does them, will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So if we hear the words of Jesus... The words he speaks to us through the scriptures, if we hear them, and if we put them into practice, it says we'll be like a wise man who built our house, who built our life on the rock, the rock, of course, being Jesus Christ. It says the rain fell, in another version it says when the rain fell, because the rain will fall. The storm came when the storm comes. The floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. If you're a Christian today, if you're watching this message and you believe in Jesus, you've given your life to Jesus, then I can assure you that even right now there might be a torrent coming against you. There might be all sorts of stuff happening in your life. You might be, as we said on Sunday, worried about your job, worried about your family, worried about yourself. You might be thinking it doesn't really make sense and not really knowing where to go. But if you have built your house, if you have built your life on Jesus, then it doesn't matter what comes, you are not going to fall. The promises in this book are true. If you have built your life in Jesus, you are not going to fall because you have built your house on the rock. But it goes on to give a warning. It says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Now here's the thing, this is really talking about the same storm. The, the storm that knocked this house down wasn't any greater for the non-believer than it was for the believer. It was the same storm. It was the same house. It doesn't matter what quality of materials you use when you build a house. What is important is the foundations. You could have a wooden house stand and a marble house fall based purely on its foundations. Now this is saying very clearly that if you build your house, if you build your life in anything that is not Jesus, when the storm comes, you're going to fall and great will be your fall. And I remember when I was preaching this before, I focused on that word when, when the storms come. And I talked about how it was just an absolute cast iron guarantee that a storm would come. And do you know what? Many people make the mistake of thinking, oh, man, my life is great. I've got everything I ever wanted. I don't need Jesus. People will be waking up now to the truth of Scripture. People will be, will be waking up and realising actually there's something in this that they didn't know they needed, that they didn't notice before. Because what's happened is people have built their life on their jobs. 
And now they can't go to their jobs, many of them. Now their jobs can't afford to keep them on. People have built their life based on being business people and, and building up business. And now their businesses might be shutting down. There's no income coming in anymore. People can build their life on their studies. And, and here we are. They're not able to study. They're not going to school. They, they can't get to uni anymore. People have built their life on what seems to be good things. People have built their lives on their families. And here we are, we had Mother's Day on Sunday and mothers weren't able to be with their families. People are separated and, and who knows when we're going to be together again. People build their lives on their social calendar, on their friends. And here we are in a situation where we ain't going to get to see them. We ain't going to get to, to spend time with them. People have built their lives on, on drinking alcohol. But here we are. They can't even go out and really buy the drink anymore. I was in Tesco yesterday, just trying to stock up and buy a few things sensibly, of course. And I was talking to the the checkout operator, and I thanked her for continuing to work during this time. And I asked if if people were being reasonable or if if people were giving her issues. And she said to me that the the, the biggest issue she had was of people who were trying to buy more than three bottles of wine because they're not allowed to sell more than three things to the one person and people are going crazy that they couldn't buy the three bottles of wine. People that have built their life on that stuff, they're going to need Jesus right now. Now the stuff that I've spoken about here, some of it's not good stuff like, you know, alcoholism isn't good. If you've built your life on that, you're going to fall. But actually, family life isn't a bad thing. Loving your family is not a bad thing. It's wanting to study is not a bad thing. Enjoying your job is not a bad thing. But if that's what your house is built on, then times like this, what we're seeing right now, you're going to fall and great will be your fall. You might have already fallen more than you ever thought you would. I was speaking to a, a rich gentleman the other day. Now, you lovely guy. Um, and he, he was saying you wouldn't want to know how much he's lost in stocks and shares. Crazy amounts of money being lost. Nothing that this life has to offer is secure other than Jesus Christ. Your work is not secure. Your money is not secure. Your house is not secure. Your livelihood's not secure. Your life is not even secure. And Christians have been reading this passage and, and, and saying this for years, and people have been thinking, ah, yeah, 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 yeah okay, whatever. Bible bashers, mental people, crazy people. But I tell you what, this will be hitting home now. Because here we are in a situation that no one ever thought would happen. Here we are in a situation that's unprecedented. And all the things that this passage talks about is happening before our very eyes. So I want to encourage you in two things today. If you're listening to this message online and you know that your life is built on whatever it's built on, something else, you know your life is not built in Jesus, then I'm going to encourage you right now to make that decision, to ask Jesus into your life and to help you. Now, I'm not telling you that if you do that, you'll be safe from the storm. Not at all. This passage would tell you that the storm's still going to come. The winds are going to batter against, against you. The floods are going to come. But it says that you'll stand. Because what you've built your life on is solid. Because what you've built your life on is Jesus Christ. So if you don't know him, I'm going to encourage you to accept him tonight. I'm going to encourage you right now to ask him into your life and to start to build your house in something that will not fall. To start to build your house in something that will not perish. To start to build your house on something that's secure. And for the Christians watching just now, I'm going to ask you to search within your hearts. Is your house, is your life truly built in Jesus? Or was it partially built on some of this other stuff? Are you sitting right now watching this and you're a little gutted at your situation? You're a little low at your situation? Well, building your house in Jesus allows you to do the stuff I was talking about on Sunday. It allows you to rejoice and rejoice and rejoice and be glad and be thankful and know that God is good through the storm. Know that God is good through this terrible situation. And 
Christians who are watching this just now and your life is built in Jesus and like me, through this storm you're able to smile. Through this storm you're able to rejoice. Through this storm you're able to worship. I'm going to encourage you, as I said at the start, to start thinking about those around about you. Start thinking about those in your life who don't have the security that you have, who don't have their house firmly and solidly built on Jesus. And I'm going to encourage you all, A, to invite them to Alpha on Thursday, but why not share about Sunday's message? Why not share about Sunday's service? Church isn't closed, we keep saying it. So how about this Sunday at 11am, you invite someone to church? That's what I'm going to encourage you to do. So those are the three different types of people I'm speaking to. Christians invite people to church. Christians that actually realise that part of your life has been built on the wrong stuff. Well, let's, let's repent of that. Let's apologise that. Let's put that right. Let's build our entire house in Jesus. Let's make sure our foundations are firmly based in the rock. And for anyone watching this who's not a Christian, and, and you literally are watching your life and everything you've believed in and everything you've lived for falling down in, in disaster at your side, you might go, you know what, I've been avoiding God my whole life. I've been thinking these people are crazy. I've been putting this off. But actually, there's got to be more than, to life than this. This just does not make any sense. There's got to be more. I'm here to tell you that there is more. I'm here to tell you that if you put your trust, if you build your life on Jesus Christ, then you're going to be able to withstand whatever this storm and whatever any other storm could ever throw at you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I again just thank you for this opportunity to share the gospel, to share your love and goodness with people. Father, I pray that you've encouraged us tonight. I also pray that you've challenged us tonight. Father, I pray that you would give us opportunities this week to invite people to Alpha. God, I pray that you would give us opportunities this week to invite people to church. And Father, I pray that you would just continue to do a work in our lives, that you would draw us closer to you, that you would teach us more than ever before, that you would keep us using the opportunity that we have at home this week, next week, the week after, to be in the Word, to be in the Bible, to be learning, to be, to be changing, to be transforming as children of God. But God, I also just want to pray for anyone watching this video right now who doesn't know you, for anyone whose life has been built on other things, they're going to be feeling it just now. There's going to be a realisation just now that what they thought was secure is, just, is, is not even the slightest bit secure. What they thought was unsinkable, what they thought was unbreakable is sinking and breaking before their eyes. And God, I pray right now, as they watch this from the comfort of their own home or, where, or wherever they are, they would just feel a tug in their heart. They would just have a feeling right down in the pit of their stomach that they need to put their situation right. They never realised life was so fragile. They never realised that everything they had was so fragile. But God, they know that they need some strength in their life right now. And I know that the only strength to be found is found in you. So right now, God, I just ask that they would know that a decision has to be made right now to follow you. And for those listening, I'm just going to say a prayer just now. And you know what, whether you've prayed this before or whether you haven't, I'm going to ask you if you want to have Jesus in your life, if you want to build your life in Jesus, if you want to have that strength and security, then I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Just repeat it after me. Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for giving your life for me. And Jesus, I'm sorry that I've ever built my life on anything that is not you. I'm sorry that I've ignored you. I'm sorry that I've never turned to you. But God, in this situation, I realise that you are real. I realise that you are true. I realise that what I have is nothing. I realise that everything I have is insecure. 
and unsafe and weak. And God, I would like to have your strength in my life. Jesus, I would like you to help me. Jesus, I would like you to protect me. Jesus, I would like you to lead me through this storm. So Lord Jesus, right now, I give my life to you. I place my life into your hands. I thank you for your forgiveness. And I ask you to help me through this storm. Amen. Guys, I just want to encourage you that if you said that prayer tonight for the first time, send me a little message letting me know that you have. You'll get me on Dave at homechurch.scot or go to Facebook, search for Home Church Scotland and send me a private message on there. If you've said that tonight for the first time, I want to be praying for you tonight. So make sure you send me a message. Leave a comment even. Let me know so I can be praying for you. Uh, and praying that God will, will bless you, praying that he will absolutely, if you've invited him into your life tonight, he's already come. He's already there. And I guarantee you, he will lead you through this storm and your life is going to change. But let me know you've done it so I can pray for you. That would be great. Hey guys, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been, it's been great to do church with you again. Online Again, just encourage you to be inviting people on Sunday. Invite someone to church 11am Sunday morning. Invite someone along to Alpha. If you want, if you have any prayer requests through this entire situation, please let us know. We've got a team of people who are ready and willing and able to support and, and help as many people as we possibly can. Uh, I'm going to leave you with Raise a Hallelujah. We've done it on Sunday morning. Um, and it's had such great feedback. I just thought, uh, you know, we would play it again because it's a really, I just feel it's a key song for this situation. So we'll leave you with that and I'll see you all again on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Bless you. Praise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies Raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief Raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody Praise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive Praise a hallelujah With everything inside of me Raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee Raise a hallelujah In the middle of the mystery Praise a hallelujah Fear you've lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, whatever life's thrown at you, just sing to the Lord and worship Him today. Sing a little louder. 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 Sing a little louder.